Hey guys, welcome back to the Bro Bryce Cook's Kitchen. We're doing this live on the Bro Bryce Health uh, Facebook group. And I thought I would just uh, open this up to you guys uh, commenting back and forth. I'm going to be cooking up a dinner tonight. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, like uh, you know how I do this stuff on the cheap. Like a lot of people say that keto is super expensive and it's difficult so much meal prep oh my gosh i can't do it it's too hard so what we're gonna do tonight is just show you how we do it like day after day super simple super cheap and special treat we're gonna use the air fryer tonight i haven't done a video with the air fryer before but we're gonna use the air fryer tonight and I'm gonna show you how to do it like mega super cheap uh, and super easy. So for one thing, the air fryer that I'm using here is like a $50 air fryer, I got it on sale. And, and honestly, for an air fryer, you don't need any of the fancy electronic gadgets. You know, maybe if you're super spoiled and you can't figure out how to cook stuff for yourself. But for the most part, these things have like a printed thing on the front of them that shows, this is a Farberware, and it shows like a printed thing, tells you how long to cook things, and, and that's pretty much what you need. You, you just cook it on the temperature it says for the amount of time that it says, and all you need is a knob that goes for temperature and a knob that goes for time, and, and that's what you get. So, uh, mine's a little bit faded on the timer thing, but... You don't need much, you know. Maybe I'll hit that with a Sharpie so I don't lose track. Anyway, I'm just going on and on. But you guys can comment along the way and ask questions along the way because this, I'm just going to make this super cheap, super easy for everybody. Um, one, the first pro tip that I'm going to give you on using an air fryer is parchment paper, okay? No matter which air fryer you get, when you get this basket, it's going to be like this pretty, pristine, non-stick coating. But all these holes, like their fatty foods and stuff, get stuck in there eventually. And you end up scrubbing it so much that uh, there's no getting it all out of there. So I don't even worry about it anymore. And I'm actually like trying to let this season some. But in the meantime, what I do is I'll take my parchment and I'll pull out a square sheet, right? It's my technique. So I'll pull out a sheet big enough to make a square. Like that. And then, I'm gonna set this aside because I don't want it to be in the way. And then I take my basket out, a little round basket. You see, even the bottom of this is wearing out. I don't care. Um, the non-stick coating does not last forever on these things, but it doesn't mean that you have to retire your air fryer. So what I do then is I set down my uh, air fryer basket. Well, I can just use this cook top over here to do this. Set the air fryer basket on the corner of it. And then somewhere up here, I've got a Sharpie. Nope. Sharpies disappeared. Someone took the Sharpies. Everybody reorganizes the kitchen for their own liking. Alright, so I got my Sharpie. I'm just going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to make a circle around. I like a rough circle. I'm not even trying to be perfect, okay? I'm going to just draw a circle around the basket. And it just so happened that uh, when I did this, that I found out that uh, one of these silicone trivets like this is, uh, hey Jessica, uh, one of these silicone trivets is actually the size of this circle. So for the other one, I'll just use this silicone trivet. But, um, you know, find a silicone trivet or, or something else that might be just the, the right size for your air fryer. And we're going to air fry pork chops tonight. We're going to air fry some pork, pork loin chops. And because we're doing this on the cheap, cheap, okay, I bought a big old pork loin. Okay, center cut pork loin. And I try to find the fattiest one that I could find, okay? Like, just find, like, a big-ass layer of fat on it, okay? 
And that's what I go for because this is a dollar sixty-eight a pound. All right, dollar sixty-eight a pound. Pork loin is like one of the cheapest, cheapest dirt, cheapest meats that you can get, and is really luxurious tasting too. <coughs> so it's wonderful, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna fry that up in the air fryer, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Uh, but I'm gonna cut this other circle here, or trace this other circle here. And like I said, you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be perfect with it. The silicone trivet thing, uh, that just happened. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, happen often that, that uh, numbers work out in your favor a lot. But if you have something like this that works out, it's great. So now I've got these two circles drawn on my parchment paper. And what you can do is like just get, it's like do a whole bunch of these. Like if you got time, uh, to sit down uh, and just cut a bunch of these out. And what I'm doing is I cut just inside the circle because when you because you don't want to fry up uh, Sharpie ink with your food. You know, I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't. Uh, but you just cut inside the lines here. And later on, if you want to watch this uh, on replay on Facebook, you can. Or I'm going to upload this to my YouTube channel. Uh, the Bro Bryce Cooks channel. I'll probably upload this raw uh, live up to uh, YouTube on the Bro Bryce Health channel, but I've also got a cooking channel called Bro Bryce Cooks. And um, I will edit this down for time. I think the people on the Bro Bryce Health channel are used to watching like the full unedited lives. Hi, Lindy. Hi, Whitney. You watch the whole whole infomercial on the new air fryer yesterday. Yeah, you don't have to get like, you know, I, I suggest you get as cheap and as big of an air fryer as you can because surprisingly, you run out of space in these things pretty quickly. But I'll show you how to make the most of the space that you have in there so that you actually still cook stuff uh, relatively quickly. But as you can see, this just this just fills up the basket just because uh, you cook, you cut inside the line. And what I do to keep the the parchment from un you know unrolling inside there is I put it with the rolly side down so that it doesn't unroll on me. And that's all you got to do to keep this from being super sticky. You can spray it in addition to that, but it's not going to make that big of a difference. So now my basket is all prepped, and I'll cook, cut the other one. I'll cut the other parchment later away so it's not in the way. And let's get to cutting our uh, our pork loin. Yeah, the new one has trays. Yeah, this one has trays too, but honestly, uh, yeah, I never use it. Uh, and still the parchment paper, it just solves a lot of problems. Really, all I've got to do after I'm done with this, and I'll show you later after we're like long since done with this is throw out the parchment and rinse this thing out. You don't even have to use soap if you don't want to. And what I do is I, I like do it like cast iron, right? You just like wipe down and like get all the gunk and the grease out of there. And then you just take whatever's left and you cook it in there for like five minutes just to sort of season it. And, uh, anyway, so we're going to cut this, uh, pork loin up. So I'm going to tilt you guys down here and scoot you back some so y'all can see exactly what I'm doing with this uh, pork loin. I'm just using a cheapo, cheapo tripod here. Uh, and let me find a really good knife for this. So I've got a nice ceramic knife here that I'm gonna try to use. I think I have a better one somewhere, a bigger, better one somewhere, but this will be pretty good, I think. Where did the bigger one go? Hey, there it is. No, it's a pizza cutter. Same thing, different knife. Okay, we'll just use this. Put my sheath back in there. And, uh, cause we're gonna get some blood somewhere. I'm gonna put this, put this aside over here and I'm gonna set this up just to sort of catch drippings. Cause I don't wanna have any kind of hazard. And, in addition to that, y'all know what I do 
especially Cat, if you're watching this, Cat will notice that I'm putting on my gloves. So, uh, no cross contamination in my kitchen, at least as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I just cut the one end of it here, and uh, we'll just cut right through here and get it down. Okay. And then we're going to squeeze out of this end. All right, so this is like a like a round, like if you were to buy the rounds from uh, like Costco or Sam's Club, you know, you get like nine rounds for like 13 bucks or something like that. But literally that's like this much. I paid like 16 bucks for this thing and I get this big, huge thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this round and I'm going to find the fattiest part and I'm going to cut across the round like this so that there's a big hunk of fat on one end of it, okay? And then I'm going to take that over here inside my, uh, inside my air fryer and I'm going to just kind of park it to where the fat side is up. And then I'm going to take this one here with the fat side up and I'm going to position it just like that and I'm going to make a little circle of these things inside here, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but let's let's just start pushing this. Well, let's drain most of the blood out of this into the sink here, so that we can kind of be a little more sanitary. And then, okay, we'll bring it back over here, and we'll just pull this out a little piece at a time. That way, we're not getting blood everywhere. And I'm just going to cut another round off of here. And I cut them like an inch thick, okay? Because I still like it to be tender. Because if you cut them too thin, like, yeah, they'll cook faster, but it'll be dry as the day is long. You'll, you'll, you'll feel like you're just taking a bite out of a pig-flavored Sahara Desert. And uh, we don't want to do that. Lindy says, what's a good brand to get? Well, this is a Farberware. I don't think it really matters, but I would check the reviews to see, you know, uh, if people have had them fail, because I've seen people say that certain ones just stop working. Like, they loved it, and then it stopped working. Um, but mine, I've had it for, I don't know, a year and a half, something like that, and I love it. So there we go, another big chunk of fat on top of there. I'm just, uh, I'll show you, I'm just putting these in like a circle, I'm gonna dun, 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 dun. maybe stick one in the middle if I got room. And uh, here's another chunk right here. I'm gonna take the fattiest part. It looks like that's the fattiest part. And uh, you know, hopefully you got a butcher that doesn't cut too much of the fat off, because a lot of people they go for that lean, but we're not going for lean. We're going for we're going for pork chops, right? All right, and I'm going to show you how I do it where I'm really just cooking in fat. Like, part of the, the reason why I put it with a fat side up is I want that fat to drain into the meat. And uh, with, a, with an air fryer, you know, you're not adding, you don't necessarily have to add a lot of fat. I'm going to add some fat, but so we just put that fat side up. I want that fat to drain down into the meat because I want that flavor of that fat. Because that's where all the flavor's at. It's in the fat. And uh, we are not going for low fat. Uh, keto is a low carb, high fat approach. And we're not going for low fat at all. Uh, mine is a Farberware, by the way, Lindy. I don't know if I already said that. But mine is a Farberware. Uh, there are all different kinds of brands of air fryers and I'm I'm not sure it matters all that much. My phone is making all kinds of noise. I think I'm going to have to take my gloves off and mute it. Yep. That's evidently what's got to happen here. Uh, let's go over here and mute this. Because it is just making all kinds of racket and disturbing us. And I'm not... Not trying to do that. There we go. And yeah, it's protesting. There we go. 
So we'll silence the phone and uh, throw out the glove. Let's get another glove over here. Sad waste of a glove just to silence my phone. All right. There we go. And now I'm taking this uh, taking this piece of meat here, and again cutting across that fat, right? Cutting right halfway through that fat. And this way, you know, it's it's thick enough to where it's still tender, but it's not such a big hunk of meat that it takes forever to cook. All right. So I've got one bucket of this stuff ready to go, and I'm just going to show you how I'm doing that. So now, I'll take the gloves off. Because I touched the handle when I showed you the inside of the basket, I'm gonna take a Clorox wipe and I'm gonna clean my handle. And I know this is gonna seem like a lot of, uh, like what, you ever watch Phil Hartman on Saturday Night Live, the uh, anal retentive carpenter? Where he would like uh, make one stroke with the saw and then he would sweep with a whisk broom into a dustpan, into a paper bag, which he would then fold over the top, and then he would staple it, and then he would fold it over the top again so that it would cover the staple. <laughs> it's gonna seem a lot like that, but I hate uh, food contamination, so uh, here we go. So we got all the little pieces like shaped like a little circle around the sides, and uh, we, can take our, we can take our little knife and push these aside a little bit so that they're not doing that there we go so they're not touching so much you just want to have some air circulation going between them now I'm gonna set this aside probably gonna to have to wash my hands again and push this into the air fryer now pork needs to be uh, it needs to be 170 degrees and I don't have a meat thermometer, but I can show you how to test to see if you're... My, my meat thermometer is uh, kind of dysfunctional right now. So uh, Now, I do not cook at 400 degrees. I cook at 350 degrees. And the reason for that is because pork has nitrates in it. All meat really has... Uh, all red meat has nitrates in it. But I don't want them to turn into carcinogenic uh, nitrosamine. So I cook at 350. And I'm going to cook for 20 minutes... And then I'm going to turn those. In the meantime, I'm going to continue uh, cutting. Well, I'll come back and cut this uh, in a little bit. Well, no, I think I'll cut it right now. Just get it done, right? Cut these rounds. And just make stacks of these rounds. And then we'll come back to that. And I'll just wash my hands afterward here. Get rid of all of this pork as quickly as possible. And then what I'm planning to do tonight is just make a marathon of it and cook all of this stuff so that later on I can just heat these up in the microwave and have some ready-to-go food. And what I love is, check this out, some of these rounds are like in the middle of this, look at that fat layer. Holy mackerel! That is going to be the yummiest pork chop in the world okay and in our former lives we used to avoid the fatty cuts like this we would cut half of this stuff off and then you'd wonder why you had to season the tar out of it by the way yeah let me get back to that because I kind of skipped something didn't I wash my hands here And we're going to season it and grease it up. Like I said, I remember I said I was going to cook high fat, right? Well, a lot of those cuts of the meat are actually pretty lean. So I got a bunch of seasonings over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you down here. I'll bring you a little closer if I can. Here we go. All right, so I think you can see in here, right? Yeah, you can see in there. All right, 
So I'm going to take and just liberally salt the living tar out of this. Because it needs to have salt or it'll be really bland. There we go. Put some salt. And then I'm going to put some coarse black pepper on it. A little bit. And then a little bit of Montreal steak seasoning. I also found that like the kicking chicken seasoning works pretty good on pork. Just a little bit because there's already salt on the meat. Okay, and then on top of that, where's my little misto sprayer? Where did it go? Like I said, people like to reorganize this kitchen to their own liking. <laughs> and they think that it's suitable. And it's not. So I'm going to be looking for this misto sprayer for God knows how long. What the heck? Oh, duh, that's right in front of me. Hello. Okay, so this has got avocado oil in it. And I am going to spray liberally. Sometimes that spray, like, just does that. So I'm going to turn on the vent. Get a little loud. You know, they say all you need is a little spritz of it. <laughs> Why? Okay. There, I'm going to stick that back in there and let that get going again. Might not be a great idea to have the air fryer venting right into the paper towels. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, back to it here. going to get this uh, pork loin all chopped up. About halfway through it here. And we'll just stick it in a big bowl and we will come back to it while we're making our other stuff we'll just keep on cooking pork until it's all done and then we got a bunch of pre-cooked pork loin nobody's got to bother with uh, doing all this over again we'll just cook a bunch of it then if you want to just go all full on carnivore or something you can just pull some out and zap it in the microwave. There we go. And I did this for uh, I did this for a couple months. I would do this with uh, pork sirloin, pork sirloin roast, pork belly. Uh, pork's a really bioavailable protein, and in fact, uh, many diabetics still use. Pork-based insulin, because pork is pretty readily absorbed into the human body. Which is why I think it's a shame that a lot of people are avoiding red meat, because this stuff is really bioavailable. But I do understand, you know, people have an ethical problems with, uh, with the treatment of animals and stuff. I would rather see animals treated better, but truth is, animals are my dinner, and I'm going to eat them. <laughs> and uh, the cheaper, the better. I wish that we had more affordable options for animals that were treated well. But unfortunately, what happens is when you create a market, people vote with their dollars, and they support that market. So now market tends to thrive. You end up with things like grass-fed beef. When all beef used to be grass-fed, you didn't have cattle that didn't eat grass. That used to be, not be a thing. It was grass-fed just because it was a cow. You didn't have grass-fed beef. I mean, you had, you only had grass-fed beef. You didn't have, it wasn't an option. You didn't pay extra for grass-fed beef. You just had beef. Okay, so I'm going to get a big bowl here. With a 
pork in it so we can get our cutting board cleaned up and we're not bleeding all over the place. And I can get this stuff in the fridge because it doesn't need to sit out anymore. Anyway, I see there's four of you guys watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments there. I appreciate any kind of questions that you have. And we're going to uh, also do some cream broccoli and cream cauliflower tonight, which is something that uh, some of you know that I don't eat that much vegetables. But my mother-in-law demands vegetables every night. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. So, those of you who, like me, have families of mixed uh, flavor profiles, different things that they want, different things that they need every day to be able to function, uh, some of you can relate, like you have kids that they just can't function without uh, such and such for lunch or such and such for breakfast. So, we have a 70 year old kid living right over there. <laughs> so, let me uh, put this pork in the fridge. Uh, yeah, right. to make dinner. So, hey, welcome to my family. June, thanks for the book, Why to Get Fat. I hope you enjoy it. I think Gary Taubes is an excellent writer. I will be doing another book giveaway this, uh, this Sunday. Our plan is for me and uh, Cat Keto to get together and do a That's Not Keto debate over a whole bunch of food. I got, I got some pictures of uh, different products at the store that I want to argue over. We're gonna make some. Uh, we're gonna make some broccoli and cauliflower. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, so it's not too difficult. It's not too challenging. And I can still read you guys. some leftover cauliflower and leftover broccoli here. I'm going to finish that off first. Sometimes Julie mixes them up. I'm not going to mix them up today. But we will see how this goes. I will eat veggies today because I feel like it, not because I think I need them. Although some of you would say, hey, you need your veggies. Okay. We can debate that in another video, but I'm going to make veggies tonight. Uh, about, I don't know, about two-thirds of the time I don't eat veggies at all. Hey, Shannon, welcome to the stream here. I'm going to 
make some cream cauliflower and some cream broccoli. I'll show you how I do it. And uh, by the way, this is uh, based on a recipe uh, that I, that the, the beginnings of this is uh, based on a recipe for a cauliflower mash. Beetle? Beetle. Pull it down. My dog is barking. Like I said, welcome to my family. This is an example of a perfect keto meal. Okay, this is a high fat, low carb, um, nutrient dense dinner that we're going to have that is going to provide lots and lots of nutrition. It'll be super satisfying and uh, doesn't require a whole lot of work. Um, by the way, these veggies are already pre washed. Um, I would say when you're doing your veggies, read the label. If it does not say that it's pre-washed, you must assume that it is not washed. And I will tell you from my own experience as an organic gardener that just because it says that it's organic doesn't mean they didn't spray it with something. So they may use some kind of, uh, uh, sometimes they use uh, soaps or they use neem oil, which is not good for you to eat, or they use uh, BT, which is still considered an organic, uh, an organic pesticide. And uh, BT is used in BT corn, which is why, one of the reasons why no matter what part of the corn an ingredient might use, I never eat anything with corn in it, ever. Aside from the fact that it's a grain, I'll, I'll get into another video about that sometime. Um, maybe we'll do a, a live on organic versus not organic, and we'll talk all about the various different reasons. But, uh, alright, so I'm just chopping these up into like moderately small pieces so that they do end up uh, getting cooked down some. Now, my mother-in-law doesn't have teeth, so we got to cook it down a little more than I would like. So I like mine kind of al dente. And uh, al dente means that it's it's pretty close to raw, but it's warm. That's how I like my veggies. But when it comes to veggies, my mother-in-law pretty much requires that they be cooked into oblivion, which I, I, I find, it, I don't think it's that debatable, but some would say that it's debatable whether the, there's any nutritional value left to them when you cook them down to that, uh, that level. I think that probably the carb impact is probably higher because the fiber is is uh, cooked down into oblivion when you cook them down that far, but either that or she doesn't get any veggies. And uh, if nothing else, we want my mother-in-law healthy and we want her to comply. <laughs> so, like if you want your family members to comply, there are certain allowances that you will have to make in order to make it so that they will actually do what you plan in your in your meals. So I'm just cutting these down moderately. I'm not cutting them down to lay you know, I'm not trying to make rice cauliflower or nothing. Um, and She's not going to choose to eat these like stalky parts like that. So she's going to choose to eat this stuff. But I'll eat this stuff just fine. And if it was all three of us eating, I would say fill these up all the way. But it's just going to be the two of us eating. And there's no way that we're going to finish all this. Or I could make, I could fill it all the way up. And that way uh, she'd have something to, some veggies to eat tomorrow. and I wouldn't have to make them again. Which I'm all for that. 
I try to, you know, like some people, they do meal prep for the whole week and they get all their stuff all set up for the whole week and I'm admiring that. Um, but from day to day, I can't predict what my life situations are going to be like. So this is a little brownish. If it's not a little brownish or dryish, I just don't cut it off at all. But um, that's a little brownish, so I'm going to put it down the garbage disposal. Yeah, I think I will go ahead and fill this all the way up so we have some extra for tomorrow because I probably won't eat vegetables tomorrow or the next day. Most days I just don't. And you say, oh, but you need fiber. Well, the truth is that you, when you were eating carbs all the time, you got a lot of fiber from your... Uh, grains and, and other products that you were eating that had fiber in them, carbohydrate um, based foods have a lot of fiber in them much of the time and, and that's promoted as some, being something healthy but truth is that fiber causes irritable bowel syndrome. Number one cause of irritable bowel syndrome, fiber. Go figure, right? Um, and in actuality when you get constipated, when you give up those carbohydrates, it's actually because you have an electrolyte imbalance most of the time. If you don't have a blockage, but it's usually because you have a, an electrolyte imbalance. And getting rid of all that fiber out of your diet uh, revealed that. That's really what, what it showed. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself from several lives that I've done on the topic, but um, it's, it's important to know the difference between a fiber deficiency and an electrolyte imbalance, which is most likely the case if you are having issues with diarrhea and constipation, uh, you're having electrolyte issues. So once you get those electrolyte issues straightened out, you find yourself not constipated most of the time, almost every time. So most people are ma uh, magnesium deficient Somewhere between 65 and 75 percent of all people are magnesium deficient. And magnesium, uh, some people already know, uh, will help you to have regular bowel movements, among other things. Might also help with your muscle cramps, uh, edema. I had, I used to have edema in my legs. And I don't have them anymore since I really got my electrolytes figured out. All right, so we got enough broccoli here. Let's go with the cauliflower, finish off the cauliflower here. There we go. Hey, we have a ding. We'll get to that in just a second. Well, yeah, we'll get to that right here in just a second. So let's go over here. Let's move you over here so we're checking out this uh, this pork. Here's our air fryer again. And look at this beautiful browning that's happening on here. Isn't that lovely? It smells wonderful. Dinner is on the way. So, here we go. Now I'm gonna take my tongs and I'm gonna flip these over. Now that I've cooked some of the fat down into them, I'm gonna flip these over. Try and do this in such a way that you guys can see what I'm doing. But I wanna flip these over so that we get that air frying going on, the air circulating, that superheated air circulating around all the surfaces. And then I'm gonna spray it with some more fat but the cool thing about the air fryer is not the low-fat cooking, because I don't give a crap about low-fat cooking. Lost 117 pounds eating an unimaginable amount of fat. So, totally not worried about it. Uh, and my cholesterol is under control, and my blood pressure dropped by 30 points. And Check it out, man. I'm wearing skinny jeans and they're baggy on me. 
Okay. That doesn't make you fat, folks. Welcome to keto. All right, so now we got that all set up there. I'm going to take... Now, you see that's still a lot of pink in there, right? So we do not want pink on the outside of our meat. We don't mind having a little tiny hint of pinkish coloring on the pork when it's all the way done. But we don't want it to be straight up pink because it's pork. And you'd like to go with the whole not going to die today plan. There we go. Get some more of that oil on there on every surface and shove it back in there and do another 20 minutes. Let's get that upright again. Try and stand them out there. And it is just getting crispy on the outside too. That's just lovely. I love that. All right, so we're gonna do another 20 minutes. Bring you back over here. And we will do some more of this cauliflower. Love you guys for sticking with me. I know it's a little long, but we're going to go long tonight. And as uh, long as you guys want to stick with me, that's totally cool. And again, if you want to watch this like totally edited down sooner or later when I get like some kind of spare time to do some editing. I will edit this video down and put it up on the YouTube channel, Bro Bryce Cooks. It's like, you know I have a Bro Bryce Health channel on YouTube. Now you know I have a Bro Bryce Cooks channel on YouTube where I do uh, some of my more uh, edited videos showing my recipes. Here we go. And you know, I'd love to say that all of this, all of these veggies are organic. Um, they're not, because I'm cheap. I can't afford it. And um, like Dr. Barry likes to say, uh, it's still way better than the way I used to eat. I don't. Uh, I can't afford to eat uh, grass-fed beef and and uh, grass-fed pork. Do pork do, do pigs even eat uh, grass? I'm not sure. I thought they eat slop. I thought real like healthy pigs just ate slop. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. But you know, I'm not eating top ramen. I'm not eating canola oil, or safflower oil, or soybean oil, or any of those other refined so-called vegetable oils. I don't sit around the house trying to squeeze oil out of grasses to eat with my food. That's what you're doing when you eat canola oil or uh, safflower oil. All right, so we got enough veggies cut up. Let's take these bags. And you can get like chip clips or something like that. Just uh, gonna show you my dirt cheap way to do it. That's a clothespin. Yep, that's right. That's a clothespin. Fold it over like so. And clothespin. I know people like they forgot what clothespins are, but clothespins are those little wooden thingies that you use. Well, sometimes plastic, but little wooden thingies that you use to hang up your clothes to dry. They're, they're the things that uh, that your grandma used to use to hang up clothes to dry because uh, electric dryers ruin your clothes and they cost a lot of money to run all the time. So, next, cream. Butter. We're going to use a lot of butter. Each one of these trays of veggies is going to have three tablespoons of butter in it. 
One, two. These are two tablespoon blocks that we've sort of pre-cut. There we go. Three. One. So I like to use three tablespoons each of butter and cream. Someone say, well, that's really a lot of calories. Well, we're not going to eat all this all in one sitting. I mean, one person is not going to sit here and eat, what is it, half a cup of, <laughs> half a cup of, of uh, cream. Wait, no, that'd be, let's see, six tablespoons, six tablespoons, 12. That's almost a whole cup. <laughs> Three quarters of a cup of uh, cream. I mean, because butter is cream, right? So, three quarters of a cup of fat. Three. So if you're doing this on the daily, and you're wondering why you're not losing weight, it might be because you're eating your body is eating the fat from your mouth hole and not from your hips. Your body doesn't care where it gets it from, it just takes it from the easiest place possible. And the mouth hole is easier. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna, we got two microwaves here. So we got one over here and one up here. So we're gonna put each one of these in the microwave for six minutes. And try not to blow up the kitchen. All right. Clean up the mess as we go along so we don't have a, like a, a freight train accident to clean up later. Take this cream and put it away. All right. Now we've got uh, like, I don't know, something like. 12 minutes left on our pork chops. I like to not have a total disaster in the kitchen to clean up afterwards. So, if you guys have any questions along the way, I see there's still one person watching. If you're that person, leave some comments down here. And, and uh, what do you think? We got some uh, air fried pork chops coming up. We got some cream broccoli and cream cauliflower. You know what I could do? I could go over on my other phone and, uh, huh, you could cook it in the oven, but I think it would take longer. I don't know. You'd have to, uh, you'd probably have to monitor it closer. I don't know. But the air frying, uh, it cooks the surface of it and it seals in that heat it cooks from the outside in sort of like deep frying so the principle of deep frying that makes it so uh, great for cooking at high speeds is that you have this high super high temperature oil that's always in contact with the surface so it superheats the surface and it makes the surface really crispy and it works its way inward so the principle is the same here but you're using uh, uh, basically like an oven element. It's really an oven, really, because it's an oven element that's inside there, and a turbine that pushes the air down, it circulates it really fast in a, in a circle around your food. And uh, so that superheated air does the same thing that the oil does. There's nothing super special or magical about a deep fryer, but what but what there is, is this just that superheated oil. So we're using the superheated air instead. 
the only advantage that I see of it, okay, is that number one, you know, you're likely to use a lot of oil. The cheapest oils you get are going to be like soybean and vegetable oils and stuff like that. That's uh, air fryer. Maybe I could cook vegetables, but I have an air fryer. Oh yeah, maybe you could cook them in the air fryer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I imagine that's possible. You could have like roasted vegetables. Um, we started doing this uh, in the microwave because uh, of a recipe for cauliflower mash that uh, if I get around to it, I'll put a link to the, the recipe for cauliflower mash that, that we basically adapted just to make cream cauliflower and cream broccoli. But, uh, if you don't like doing it in the microwave, I would imagine there's a way to do it in there. But what this does is it is it basically boils the 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 cream and up around the stuff and then we stir it up midway so it's going to go for six minutes we got about two minutes left and then it's going to be we're going to stir it up and i'll show you an easy way to do it since i basically overfilled these things to the point where it's going to be doggone near impossible to just stir it So I'm going to use a big bowl, I'm just going to dump it into this big bowl, and then I'm going to dump it back out, and that will stir it. <laughs> so all the cream will cover every surface. That's the whole idea, anyway. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to figure out a, a, how that's, I mean, that, that's something you could experiment with. Um, we do a lot of experimenting, but we, you don't use a microwave ever? Yeah, I don't blame you. I would say you'd probably be better off than just uh, sautéing it with the cream in a pan. I mean, that would probably be how I would approach it, if that's how you're going to do it. And and just for the purpose of, of not for debate, but for information, uh, Maggie, why don't you use a microwave? Just throw it out there. I mean, I'm, I'm always uh, trying to learn. Uh, I try to do this like as a convenience thing, but there's... I know there's got to be legit reasons why people don't use microwaves. Alright. Now this is going to be super hot. Every one of this is going to be super hot. You know, you probably could do it just in the oven, but I think you'd have to like get in there and open it up and stir it a lot. I think it'd just be easier just to do it on the in the pan if you're gonna if you're not gonna use the microwave for this. You could probably just do it in a big pan. There we go. basically just covers every part of all the cauliflower. Just turns it upside down and backward and there we go. And sometimes what you can do to uh, to get this so it steams better, especially if you don't want all the cream to evaporate, which uh, part of the recipe for the, the cauliflower mash is to, is to let it get a little bit drier. and put it over the top of it. Do another six minutes. On that.
Yeah, I've done a little bit of research on it. I, do, I would agree that I think that the nutritional value is probably diminished, but I'm not sure all the way if I'm down with the whole idea that your body just doesn't recognize the food at all. Um, I'd have to do some more studying on it to really decide whether I agree with that 100%. But I will say that I agree with you on this, that at the very least, the nutritional value of microwave food has got to be diminished because of the technique of cooking. And in fact, uh, recently I've just sort of like uh, been pondering the idea that inside the microwave, you really don't have control over the temperature itself. Um, like, you know how long it takes to heat this up to the point where it's sort of acceptable as a temperature or a consistency, but the truth is, while it's getting there, it's going through pulses of being superheated and not being heated. Superheated and not being heated. And I have to think that that lack of control over the temperatures maybe oxidizes some of the ingredients, some of the components of the food. So you and I can see eye to eye on maybe that level, but I'm not sure if I if I totally agree with the uh, radical, what I consider to be a kind of radical assumption that, that the body doesn't recognize the food at all. I'm not sure if that's true. And to be to be honest, I'm not against radical. Keto is radical, so I'm not against radical. Don't think that I'm calling you some kind of food extremist. No, I think that the keto is extremist. I think the keto is is radical and I do it because it's healthy. But I do eat a lot of microwave food and I do think my body for the most part digests it. I'm always willing to engage in some friendly debate. And I always want to learn someone comes up with something compelling like if you want to drop a link in there to something that that like a, a proven study or something that'd be great because that, that's something I can read a lot of people can't read studies I love them so. oh that's my induction cooktop telling me that I touched it uh, thank you induction cooktop I realize that. Hey, we're coming up on the five minute mark with the air fryer. And you know what might be cool is like uh, to take this uh, cauliflower and broccoli and like a lot of people like to roast it like even on the barbecue or something. Try doing this uh, in the air fryer. Maybe you could get like a some kind of a metal bowl or something shallow metal bowl to put the cream in and have your uh, have it roasted as well as creamed that's an idea you probably have to do it in small servings in the air fryer though but it would probably be pretty yummy about uh, two minutes left on these and about three minutes left on those and then over here we got uh, like five minutes left on the pork chops Yeah, you heat everything up in the stove top or in the air fryer. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. I think that, um, you know, as much as possible, we should we should try to do those things. And I, and I agree with you on the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, idea that these are nutritionally diminished. But it's also a matter of... Um, doing what you can, what's attainable. You know, I think I like uh, Dr. Eric Westman's approach with the Duke University uh, Lifestyle Medicine Clinic where he basically says, you know, if, if people think that something is just way too hard, they might not make that effort at all. And uh, for some of my family, uh, a little effort is too much effort. <laughs> so, um, 
when we're trying to make them eat healthier than they used to, sometimes you make compromises. Some compromises are worth it, some compromises are not worth it. So one of the, you know, some of the many compromises is the actual ingredients in our food. We don't make a lot of compromises there. So like we don't eat foods that have soy in them, we don't eat foods that have canola, or safflower oil, or any kind of refined vegetable oil. For instance, there's these fish fillets that my wife loves, right? She got some from Sam's Club, and uh, and so she found them again. They came back in, they were in season, so she was like so thrilled. I found them again, and, and I looked at them, and I was, yeah, it's a fish fillet, and it's got canola oil in it. And she's like, no! Why? And then... She looks further down the list of ingredients, and there's some other thing that's that's in there that's... No! Why? Huh? Yeah. Maggie says, I got my air fryer around Christmas time. I just love it. Make my bacon in it all the time. I make my bacon in the oven. And, uh... And, and Maggie, I don't know if you've seen any of the previous videos that I've done, but uh, I take the bacon grease and I filter it, and then I pour it into an ice cube tray. And each of these particular cubes in this are one tablespoon. And I use that for cooking, or I use it... I actually made a bacon cheesecake. If you can believe it, I made a bacon cheesecake. And you, would you know, I made a bacon cheesecake, I made half bacon cheesecake and half pumpkin cheesecake, and the pumpkin cheesecake was the bomb. It was incredible. It was the perfect pumpkin cheesecake. And the bacon cheesecake disappeared faster. So yeah, something to be said for keeping your bacon grease. And I only cook my bacon at 350 or below because I don't want those nitrates to turn into nitrosamines. And that is one reason why I no longer like cooking bacon in the microwave. Now, when you and me, we kind of we see eye to eye on a couple things, but that temperature control, like if at any point during those pulses of heating and not heating, the if the if the the nitrates are reaching a temperature above like 360 or so, then they could become nitrosamines and be carcinogenic. Been keto for 14 months, but I got rid of my microwave about five years ago. Yeah. So how you been doing on on keto? I like to do, you know, I don't know. Some people don't feel comfortable doing it, but I like I like to hear check-ins and stuff like how what kind of progress. Uh, what's your non-scale victory of the of the day? Been keto for 14 months. That's pretty great, man. Um. I've been keto since uh, about, I don't know, around this time, 2015. Pulled the trigger on it and uh, lost 117 pounds. So I passed my goal weight and now I kind of hover around this uh, 10 pounds, give or take, here and there. And. Uh, yeah, you know what, this, these veggies are just about perfect for me, but probably not for the mother-in-law. So, I'm going to take mine out, because I like to taste my food. <laughs> Alright. I don't want to poke the bear too much. So, uh bear bites back sometimes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Great, a, tooth, a toothless bear. A toothless bear. <laughs> nice, a toothless bear, yes. Well, to, like I said, to clarify, we have to we have to break this stuff down a little further for the mother-in-law because she doesn't have teeth, so. Uh, and like I said before, I probably will not eat veggies for the next couple of days because I'm mostly carnivore. I eat veggies when I want to, when I feel like it. I might as well eat some. Sorry, we're disconnecting there for a second. Here we 
go. Get that going on. And then we'll have some extra for the mother-in-law. There you go. Some beautiful creamed cauliflower and broccoli. It smells wonderful. Buttery. Delicious. Alright. Uh, now I'm going to flatten that out a little bit in there. And zap it some more. Alright, yeah, let's take my paper towel, put it back over the top, throw that back in there for a couple more minutes, see what happens. <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm just talking about. You gotta, you know, that bacon grease is like just greases up the axles, you know? Keeps everything moving, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, bacon grease to me is like vitamins. Alright, so I'm gonna show you this right here. Check this out. This is our nice browned uh, pork chops. I'm gonna point this down here while our, while our other food is cooking here. And uh, so I want to show you this, okay? What this ends up looking like on the inside. And then if you're if you're like me and you got somebody in the house that doesn't have teeth, they can't eat it like this. But I show you a trick. I promise. It'll make it all good for everyone, okay? So even even people who have no teeth have no excuse for not being keto. Pull that out. That just looks. That just looks beautiful, doesn't it? A little brown, browning on the edges there. Oh, you can't. But look at that. It's beautiful. Look, it's juicy. It's got some juices in there, and it's moist. It's just beautiful. So the thick stuff, if you cook this too thin, if you cut it too thin, you're just gonna end up with something that's dry and just parches the mouth, okay? And I'm gonna let mother-in-law experiment on this and see if she can eat it, but I don't think she can. That's not gonna work. <laughs> I'm so positive, aren't I? Since that's not gonna work. Sadly. Yeah, sadly it's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bullet. So we got a Farberware. Um, this is not a Farberware infomercial, guys. I'm sorry that there's so much Farberware, but we're cheap in this house, so Farberware is something we can afford. Is that right? going to take all day to chew it? Probably. Okay, so we're going to fix that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use a bullet. And there ain't much to this, okay? You don't got to add nothing. You got to do nothing special. How much of this do you want? You want another one of those? Yeah. Okay, so that and another one, right? I think. Okay. So we'll just put another one in there. And you know, to be honest, I probably should cut that up a little better. So I'm going to use the meat scissors here and just kind of hack some pieces off of it because otherwise it may not blend all that easy. But, yeah. Yeah, about 20 minutes per bite. Yeah, about 20 minutes per bite. <laughs> so we're, got, we're not going for that. What we do want mm -hmm. is for her to have healthy proteins and be able to enjoy it. You only wanted to lose about 17 pounds and you lost 39, down to a size four. Can't lose anymore, but you feel awesome. How about this? Let me find out what this says. Your mother, your non-scale victory today is finally, both my adult girls are going to start doing keto with their family because a 12-year-old grandson was diagnosed today with lung cancer. 
And holy tar balls, if this is not an incentive to do keto, uh, cancer cells feeding almost exclusively on glucose uh, because of their mitochondria being malformed and only being able to, by a fluke, feed off of glucose, if that's not incentive for the whole family to just join together and be strong and do keto. There we go. Just a few pluses with the bullet. And we got this thing basically as deviled pork chop. There we go. Don't need a whole lot of work on that, right? Just, you know, get it down. And that way you have some texture to it too. It's not just like a meat paste. You're not trying to make a meat paste. What you are trying to do is have some food with some substance, some bioavailable proteins and fats, all them healthy fats, and not have it cooked into oblivion necessarily. There we go. And so now we have that basically like that. And, and because that's going to be a little dry like that, what we have is we'll take and put a dollop of uh, homemade mayo. This is avocado mayo. Oh, a dollop of that over here on this side. Because, holy cow, we didn't put enough fat in the, the broccoli and cauliflower. Uh, let's take some sour cream and drop it on the other side. And one of the things that we um, that we had when we were in Portland, we had we used to have this restaurant that um, they served a, a, a great pork chop that had um, that had apricot butter served with it, sour cream and apricot butter, and so. What I'm going to use, which you guys can be all screaming, hey, that's not keto. Okay. But I'm going to use a tiny bit of it. Okay. I'm going to use like a half a teaspoon of this apricot, uh, sugar free apricot jam. Like a half a teaspoon. <laughs> a serving size of this is one tablespoon, which is six times this amount. And that only has. Uh, three grams of uh, net carbs and I'm giving her a one-sixth of that so there's that and then we're gonna have this we're gonna get a plate oh yeah we got a plate we already got a plate never mind and I think our cauliflower is done let's have a look here so y'all Get a look at this cauliflower. Beautiful, tender cauliflower. And I don't know if that's quite done enough. Maybe mother-in-law needs to come over here and check it for herself. Could be. Could be done enough. Could be not done enough. I'm going to set mine aside here. Set this aside. Got some broccoli over here and some cauliflower right there. So step right up and. Which and one? Either one. See if they're. Not that one, no. that's mine. Okay. See if that's tender enough for you. Yes. Yes, okay. So then what about the broccoli? I test the broccoli. If it's tender enough to cut it with a fork, it might not take her all day to chew it up. A little longer on that? Maybe another minute. minute. Okay, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Alright, so we'll throw that in there for another minute. Try and uh, get rid of uh, as many nutrients as possible. Yeah. Amen is right. You know what? If there's if there's anything you can do to 
unite family and doing keto, anything you can do that can create that. And, and I hate to say that, you know, there being cancer in the family might be some kind of a, uh, a blessing, but, uh, if, if everybody ends up cured of what ails them, then holy cow, how good would that be, right? We have a neighbor singing to himself as he walks by. It's really awesome. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take a bite of this like, extra crispy stuff. That's so beautiful. I just love it. Mm. Oh, dang. I'm about to fall over. That is so good. I cannot believe how good that is. All right, we just made the perfect pork chops. Mmm. Okay. There we go. My goodness. But you know what, Maggie, we got some praying people up in this group. And if you want to put uh if you want to put that little boy's name in the comments down below. We can get some people praying for him, praying for that family, praying for that, praying for that little boy, because that would be a, a blessing. And if keto ends up being the catalyst that fixes everything and helps all those other people as well along the way, and you know what? Nobody's going to be driven more to uh, to learn the ins and outs of keto and to learn. Uh, uh, things about good health. Nobody's going to be more driven than uh, parents of a cancer patient. And the fact that they're not blind to the advantages of keto is already a blessing. So that's a maze balls. Okay, so I'm going to keep that nice for me. And, uh, I'll just hook you up here. And you got your salt. enjoyed this uh, uh, I'm gonna show you one last thing before before I go and uh, of course there's this mmm only tar balls that is incredible okay I'm gonna set up a plate here for my pork chops which are incredible as done as they are on the outside, you'd think they'd be burnt, but look at that, it's perfect and tender on the inside. So wonderful. Here we go. Okay. So I'll show you something, okay? There's this. And you can just take this out and rinse it off and use it again and again today is if you've got more cooking to do you can just rinse it off and use it again and again today and then when you're all done throw that out and I'll show you this look there's virtually nothing stuck to the inside of this there's virtually nothing and all of this stuff around the sides it'll all just rinse off with hot water you can at most um, scrub it out with a sponge or something you can use soap if you want it's not going to kill it but uh, then afterward, just stick it back in the air fryer for like five minutes 
and that five minutes uh, will dry it up real nice and then just let it air out. But this parchment paper keeps the stuff from sticking because I don't care how much you spend on an air fryer, them little holes, the stuff just gets through those little holes and sticks like crazy after a while. And I'm tired of that. I'm tired of like pulling my hair out trying to clean this thing. And in fact, because of that, that's why I like to do the big cooking one after the other, marathon cookings. And uh, Ian, yeah, we'll be praying for Ian. All you guys that are my peeps that are watching this video to the very end, which that's where we're at. If you're watching this to the very end, please pray for Ian because uh, his family is doing keto. They're doing the right thing. Keto is a real blessing. And in fact, in my family, uh, to me, I consider, uh, for me especially, uh, being a chronic pain survivor, and a uh, fibromyalgia survivor, and I've got a broken rib right now, and I'm in here cooking, okay? Um, you know, if, if I was a person that uh, that was still eating the way that I was, I'd be inflamed all the time, and I'd be in too much pain to actually be doing this video right now. But because I believe that keto is the answer to many, many prayers, um, you know, there's a lot of families that could be helped by this. His mom was diagnosed with diabetes at 36, and now she's 38. Well, guess what? She's going to do keto. She's probably going to reverse it. Uh, my friend Dave reversed his diabetes in something like three months. Uh, my friend Jim just called me up the other day, said his A1C was down, uh, what is it, 5.2. His doctor could not believe it. Probably still doesn't believe it. And, uh, but the truth is that you know diabetes is also just a killer, and uh, we can... We can help our diabetic friends, and there you go, autism, and, uh, you know, autism spectrum. A lot of people have uh, reported that they've, uh, they've had some relief from the symptoms of autism, and I'm not saying, like, symptoms like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's more like the, the autism spectrum behavior is brought to a more even keel, uh, on those people that, that uh, have reported that they've been having their kids on, on keto. I don't know how well it's going to affect um, uh, adults, but I would imagine, you know, reducing inflammation has got to help with a lot of these things. And, and uh, especially brain disorders, having the brain run 60 to 80 percent off ketones and then whatever glucose it needs left over coming from the liver. It's just the natural way of things. So um, I appreciate, Maggie, that you're willing to share this stuff in the group. It's so awesome. And that's, that's what we're here for. And, uh, you know, if we could get a bunch of people praying for Ian and his family, it'd be fabulous too. So anyway, you guys, I am done for the evening. I'm going to sit down and pig out, pig out. See what I did there? <laughs> All right. Have a great night. Bye.